Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about leadership, character, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the owner and managing partner of Kuhio Avenue Food Hall at the International Marketplace in Waikiki. He is Mike Palmer, and today we are going Beyond Dining. Hey, Mike, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, Rusty. Thank you for having me. Mike, you've been doing such, such an incredible job uh, with your concepts there at Kuhio Avenue Food Hall. I absolutely love it. But before we get into all of that, can you tell me a bit about your background? Yeah, sure. Um, so I, I grew up in California, um, Santa Barbara to be exact, and spent a, a lot of my life growing up there in a beautiful place. And uh, it's, it's similar to Hawaii <laughs> in California. And then um, I'm the youngest of eight kids. Uh, I went to college at Cal Poly State University in San Luis Obispo, California, where I got my business degree with a concentration in management and marketing. And um, after that, I, I, uh, I right out of college, I got a job with Jamba Juice and uh, worked with Jamba Juice in California. Uh, they were just a, a fairly young company at the time, starting to open locations throughout California. And for a couple of years, I traveled all over California, opening new locations from San Diego to San Francisco. And then I heard through the grapevine that there was a franchise partner um, looking to open in Hawaii. And uh, I said, okay, I want to put, I don't want to put my name in the hat. I want to go talk to these guys directly. So I came to Hawaii on a vacation and I heard it was the guys that brought Starbucks to Hawaii. And I reached out to them. Uh, left them a message at their office. Unfortunately, they didn't call me back until I was already back in uh, California from my vacation. But they called me um, and said, we'd love to meet you. And I, I basically said, hey, I have a lot of knowledge about Jamba. I'd love to help you guys launch the brand in Hawaii. And to make a long story short, they brought me on board. But it was supposed to be a one-year contract, an agreement with corporate. And um, after a few months, they asked if I'd stay permanently in Hawaii. And it was uh, probably one of the best decisions I ever made to, to work with those guys. It was uh, Dean and Scott McPhail um, and Greg Meyer and the McNaughton group. And uh, I learned so much from those guys. I mean, we had a great run in Hawaii. We ended up opening 36 Jambas. I think they opened over 70 Starbucks here in Hawaii. But um, amazing group of individuals that I learned. I, I developed a lot of my leadership skills working with those guys as well. So Mike, then, yeah. Mike, tell me about how you got involved in the restaurant industry. And then when did you take ownership over Kuhi Avenue Food Hall? So I pretty much my, well, it wasn't my first job, but my second job was in a fast food Wendy's in the mainland when I was 16 years old. I got a job uh, flipping burgers and doing everything at a Wendy's. And then I, I worked at a pizza place and uh, ever since in college, I waited tables at a very busy restaurant, and that's how I paid for my college, uh, working in a restaurant for four years. And um, I learned a lot. Uh, I love hospitality business, restaurants, love food, of course. <laughs> and so um, it's just, I guess it's been in my blood, so to speak, um, ever since a very young age and working with a lot of entrepreneurs and people in the same uh, food and beverage industry. and then. Um, what happened with Kuhio Food Hall is uh, I, I, after Jamba, I worked, uh, worked a stint with Wingstop, another franchise, and then uh, Ruth Chris Steakhouse worked with Randy Schock and his team, uh, you know, operating the Ruth Chris restaurants here in uh, Hawaii on three different islands. But then uh, I, I, the Mina group reached out to me and uh, Michael Mina had the Kuhio, well, it was called the Street Food Hall back then. And that was in uh, 2018. And um, they were looking for a local leadership because they had already been through, I think it was, I was the fifth manager in less than a year and a half. <laughs> uh, 
at that location. And um, so, yeah, I, I, it wasn't, I was used to doing multi-unit management, but this was one location with multiple units in it. So I thought I'd take a, take a stab at it. And uh, it was, it was a wild ride. Wow. Um, and, and Mike, you, okay. So let's talk about, um, you have a, around 10 concepts and three bars. Can you tell me more about that? Yeah. So um, it shut down during the pandemic. And then um, we, my business partner, John Fried and I uh, had an opportunity to reopen it under our own ownership. And so that happened in January, 2021. Um, and we gradually opened one concept at a time and now we're up to eight. And so, um, yeah, we've, we've got uh, Bonsai Burger, Aloha Pizzeria. We've got Greek Grotto, a Greek concept. We've got uh, our La Pina Cantina, Mexican concept. We've got Chihu Barbecue. And uh, we also have a Taqueria. We have a Tiki Bar, a Beer Bar. And coming soon, we have a, a, a sub sandwich place and a uh, health bar as well opening up. Man, it... It's absolutely amazing how you've improved that whole space. I mean, it, it's it's so great. There's so much positive energy. The music, it's so lively. Now, you mentioned, I mean, I, I would say that running any restaurant, like one restaurant, is going to be challenging. What are the challenges in running 10 concepts within a dining area? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, one restaurant is challenging. You're absolutely right. Just running a restaurant with front of house, back of house, and a huge staff. And this thing, I call it the beast. That's my nickname for it. We call it, call it the beast because it is really, uh, it does present a lot of different unique challenges, having multiple concepts, multiple menus to manage. And a lot of people think like a typical food court that we have, you know, we sublease these spaces out. But in reality, we own every concept in there, with the exception of our friend uh, Dirk at Il Gelato. We thought um, we'd invite him in because he has the best gelato on the island. And um, so it does present different challenges because, you know, when somebody calls out at a restaurant, you just have to make little adjustments and use the team you got. But here we've got these individual places with specialized menus, and it's a lot harder to slide people around if you're, if you're shorthanded. So every concept needs to have its own staff, um, even though we do cross train people. Well, you have incredible food dishes there. I mean, you literally have something for everybody, right? Uh, I like to think so. Uh, we, we do. I mean, I tell people, if you can't find something you like there, then you must be a really picky person. But, <laughs> um, you know, the, the, probably the only cuisines we don't have are Chinese food and um, Indian food. But I mean, We've got the Mediterranean, the Creek. Uh, we just opened our Hashi and Spoon, our ramen concept. Uh, I think it's the best Mexican food on the island. I love, grew up with Mexican food in California. So, um, and our executive chef, Mario Lopez, is from Mexico City, went to culinary school there, and um, he does amazing Mexican food. Uh, our burgers, I, I, not to brag, but I'll put them up against any burger in the state. Uh, and there's, yeah, it's, it's a, you, you've tried it yourself. So, I don't, I don't know if you've eaten everything, but there's a lot to try. Well, Mike, I, I mean, I had the honor of having lunch with you, Bonsai Burger, right there at your place. And I also love La Pina as well. I mean, it's tough choices, but your, your location is fantastic. And the parking is, is really convenient, too. Yeah, I, I tell everybody, you know, a lot of locals don't like coming to Waikiki because whether it's the crowds or just the challenges of finding parking, because, you know, I, I can relate, you know, parking was challenging, but when they opened international marketplace, when after the remodel, they really had the foresight to make a huge parking garage. that has got high ceilings for SUVs and trucks and surfboards on top. And um, it's great. I mean, you, you get validated parking first hours free and it's $2 an hour for the next three hours. So you can park for four hours, for six bucks in the heart of Waikiki, which I think is a bargain. So um, parking is not an issue. <laughs> I, I completely agree with you. But I, you know, I, I went there to your place where, when it was before your place at, like you said, the street. And when I come there now, I mean, it's such a big difference. Like you, you have the, the music is going, I mean, it just feels like 
there's just positive energy. I mean, it just feels great. I mean, is that something that that you really um, pay really close attention to when you're watching the type of customers that you have? Yes, absolutely. I think, um, and I love the fact that you notice that when you come in because we we want it to be a fun a vibe, right? And and I, again, I learned this with working with so many great companies in the past, and you know, visionary leaders that. People are looking for a place not just to eat, but they want a, an environment that they enjoy. And yes, it's hard to find music that everybody enjoys. Sometimes people have, you know, polar tastes on that. Some people want a quiet place. I do tell people it's not necessarily a place to come on Valentine's Day with a date for a romantic night out. Um, it's, it's lively. It's energetic. It's noisy. Um, you know, we've got a lot of TVs. Um, football is huge now. I don't consider us a sports bar, but it is an amazing place to watch the games. We've got, you know, 12 big TVs to watch them on. I just uh, signed up for the NFL Sunday ticket. So now we've got, you know, nine games on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. Um, so, and again, the beauty of it is people can come uh, with their entire family. They don't have to fight over what to eat. They come there, they can all branch out, order whatever they want, and then sit at the same table and enjoy it. And that's really what it's about people coming together to eat and converse and enjoy entertainment um and uh yeah i think um it it not for everybody but i think uh we've got a lot of locals that come enjoy it and they tell tourists about it which is great i mean the word of mouth there's nothing better than that right well i i'm one of those locals that that come there too and and Mike, let's talk about Brotherhood Grinds. You were among the first restaurants to step up to support Brotherhood Grinds. Why did you feel compelled to help Hawaii football and coach Timmy Chang? So my business partner and I, when we, we had this vision of our company, which is Ho'okipa Partners, um, we said we wanted to be of Hawaii for Hawaii. I mean, Ho'okipa, the Hawaiian name is hospitality. And everything we do, we wanted to have Hawaii be part of that. And then when you're thinking of ways to get involved in the community, um, there's so many different great organizations, nonprofits, ways to give back. And we hadn't really dialed in and nailed down exactly what groups we would support. But when Ryan Tanaka from the Hawaii Restaurant Association uh, brought it up at a board meeting, uh, that you know, Coach Timmy Chang reached out to him and said, we, we need to feed our players in the off season because the NCAA doesn't allow for that or the university doesn't have that in the budget. And first of all, I was like, what? You know? And then of course it's like, how can we help? And Ryan Giovanni Pastrami was on board. I told him right then and there, I said, count, count us in, count Keepa and the food hall in, not really knowing what it was gonna entail, but we thought, hey, UH sports is like, it's, it's not just UH, it's the entire state, right? <laughs> if there's a way to support Hawaii, UH athletics is, is a great way to do it. And um, it's, uh, it, it's so neat. And you know this because you were right there all along as well. And that's where I met you was at our first event at the food hall with the UH men's football team. And um, we had the offensive line one day, 50 some players and the defense the next day. And, and the great thing to hear from coach Timmy was that it is a recruiting tool for them to have all these restaurants. And initially I think there was just four of us and now it's growing every day. There's more restaurants jumping on board, which is great because it's become this huge effort of Ohana and community getting behind to support the UH men's football who just won their first game and the homecoming this weekend. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, congrats coach Timmy and, and the rest of you, but uh, it's, it just snowballed into this huge thing. So now, as you know, it's not just the UH men's football, it's men's basketball, it's men's volleyball, it's women's volleyball, women's basketball, the golf team, soccer, they all got involved. And of course, now we're like, okay, we need more restaurants to help with this. And so many restaurants that are part of the Hawaii Restaurant Association have stepped up, which is, it's just neat because it's really the community coming together to support our men and women in athletics. And uh, there was a real need there. So um, I can't tell you how exciting it has been to be part of that. And it wasn't anything like, oh, what's in it for us? 
you know, if that comes great, it's just one of those things that, Hey, this is a great cause. Let's get behind it. Well, I want, I want everybody to come and support you because you support our community and, and brotherhood grinds also evolved into sisterhood grinds, which is absolutely amazing too. And Mike, you have both of my books and you, you're such a great leader that I want to ask, you know, what, what are some things that stood out to you in the books? Well, I mean, there's so much you, you Rusty, like your books. I mean, they're, it's short and sweet, which I love, but the, the knowledge and your experience of 22 years of champions, right. And then it, it, it translates, right. We always know sports and business and home life. There's so many things that translate, but um, you know, there, it's hard to pick one thing that stood out in your books, but you know, a lot of it just resonated. It's my own personal philosophies and what I've learned as, as a uh, leader and working with people, but first of all, people, right? So I tell, I tell everybody when I went to Cal Poly, which is a great college, and I would guess this is a case of any university where people are studying business. They don't talk so much about people yet. 80% of my conversations, my meetings, um, the, the day-to-day interactions I have are about my team or, or vendors. It's all people, you know, and I think any business leader you talk to, you don't achieve success alone, right? There's a lot of people and that to me, and I love because that's what your book speaks to and with your players and, um, you know, developing these other leaders is really what it is because if you've got a vision and big goals, you need a big team to do that or, or a lot of people that share in that vision. Right. So I, I love that, you know, that, um, you know, the, the people aspect, it, I, I didn't count how many times people's mentioned in the book, but <laughs> it's a lot. Um, and that's the advice I give to anybody. You better learn about people and what motivates them um, and how to interact with them. And if not, you need to find yourself somebody that you work with that has those skills. And I've noticed that too, a lot of business partnerships, there's the people person, and then maybe the visionary or the technical person, right? And I think um, there's a lot of successful partnerships and, and, and teams and organizations that have that chemistry. You know, it's not necessarily one person, it's, it's a you know, group of them. Um, I love what you talk about character. Uh, I, I try to find people that have that because you can't teach it. You know, one of my mantras my entire career has been when I hire people, I, you know, I hire for personality and I train for skill. Um, now, if you're a rocket scientist at NASA, that might not work. Um, but in the hospitality, food and beverage industry, um, that is something that has really worked well. You know, I say, I don't care what your resume says, how much you know, technical skills you have, although it's helpful. But I used to think I could teach people how to smile and be hospitable, but it really is actually something that is just people are born with, I think. Um, and then all you can do is try to enhance that and give them a culture and environment that they can feel free to be themselves. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I was wrong too many times when I said, oh, this person's kind of quiet and subdued. Maybe I can bring it out of them. And I've been proven wrong. So, um, I think that character is key. Um, you talk about culture, and I'm huge on that. Um, I've been very blessed to work with companies that had amazing cultures, including the the Starbucks Jamba guys I talked about. Amazing. We're like a family. We still have get-togethers every year because we loved working with each other so much, even though they sold the companies. And um, we still have reunions um, because we're like this huge family. And so that creating that culture is something I was tasked with doing when I came in to the street, the food hall. And, you know, I, I noticed that I had to make some changes, and you know, just improve the culture because that's the other thing. It's a retention tool. If you have people that love coming to work every day and enjoy who they work with and enjoy their bosses, that's an amazing culture that helps you not only retain people, it helps you recruit new people, which as we know, is very challenging these days for a lot of industries, not just food and beverage. So um, yeah, in your book, I mean, there's so many great things and I love it because um, it just, I, your book is great. I, I recommend it to anybody because it's, there's so much great knowledge in there and your, your 
personal experiences and then you share other experiences and your individual players. I love that everybody's story is different, right? So a lot of good stuff. Well, Mike, what's amazing is you've created this culture of excellence at Kuhio Avenue Food Hall now. And how would you describe your leadership style? Um, that's, it's, that's a good question. I, I always try to lead by example, which again, you talk about in your book. Um, I, I don't ask anybody to do anything. I want to do myself. And I, I've always considered myself a coach. You know, I, I say I'm a coach. I'm here to support, not necessarily point my finger and tell you what to do. Although that, you know, delegation is a huge part of leadership. But um, I believe that, you know, one of the most important things I tell my other managers is the team needs to know you're there for them at all times. That means even if you're off, you know, you call, it doesn't mean you have to answer your phone, but call them back, you know, um, that way they know if they really need you, you're there, you're available, you know, or if you're at the restaurant, check in with everybody. It's a big place. So when I hire managers, if they're external, I make sure they come down and spend a few hours before, and they know what they're getting into. I say, this isn't a sit on your butt kind of management job. It's you're going to put some miles on walking around the place, checking in with each concept, you know, and the team loves that. They, they know, oh, there's somebody here that if I need them, they're available and they're checking on. Them. So um, that, that level of support is very important. And as a leader, that's what I try to do is, is be supportive of my team. Um, I try to lay out the goals and give them, you know, discipline. I think, you know, when you talk about the four P's, right, people, we already talked about uh, the purpose, the process. Um, I think we're in the process stage, you know, with such a big operation, the restaurant being a year and a half old, we're still working on those processes to eat, to get to the end result, which is that top notch winning championship performance. And I feel like there's days we hit that, but we still, you know, go back, okay, we need to change this process or improve this process. So we can have that, you know, top notch winning, you know, winning team performance. And that's a daily struggle to do that. But again, you trace that back to the people, right? Um, having the right people that share the vision and want to be a winning team, because that's important. If, if they don't care, it's just a job, then, you know, you're not doing yourself any favors. They got to have that passion as well. No, I'm glad you brought up the four P's and, and yeah, I, I can see how you guys are in the, the process stage and, and Mike, during the pandemic, what did you do to help the nurses at Kaiser Permanente? Uh, well, the Honolulu magazine uh, reached out to me, uh, Christy Davis, a dear friend of mine works there. And they said they had a program that partnered with restaurants to feed the nurses or the heroes, right, on the front lines during the pandemic. So um, she asked, you know, will you be willing to, you know, provide some meals? And I said, absolutely. So, um, you know, we packed up a bunch of meals and brought them down to Kaiser Permanente uh, and um, delivered them and they were super happy and gave them. And, you know, there was other restaurants doing this too. So again, it was a great thing to be part of and so easy to say yes to. And then I think, Three weeks later, we donated a bunch of meals to Queens Hospital and the nurses as well. So um, it was it was just, again, such an easy thing to say yes to. Um, they were working crazy hours, crazy conditions. And, you know, I can't even imagine like when I think I have a hard day, I think of what it, what a, somebody in the medical profession's hard day is like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's incredible how long their hours are, the, the nurses and the doctors and and how little sleep they get before they got to work again. And that, that's so great of you. And you, you mentioned earlier your business partner, John Fareed. I mean, you guys make such a, so you guys have such a great partnership. Why do you guys make such a terrific team together? I mean, we really complement each other. I think, um, you know, when I first met John, uh, it was interesting. You know, he was, he was doing consulting for the mall owners. and. On my first day on the job when I was with the MENA group, he basically told me, we got to turn this restaurant around or we're shutting it down in a few months. Like that was as blunt as it could be. And I was like, wow, my first day on the job. Okay. Um, but what I learned from that is he's, he's transparent. He's going to tell me 
exactly how it is. No BS, right? And and that's good that to work with somebody like that. Sometimes it stings, but you know, you know what you what you have to do, right? There's no there's nothing secretive or hidden agendas or anything like that. So over the over the time as him the consultant, we we got to know each other and really liked each other. And I was same. I was very transparent with him and um, you know, he liked what I was doing with the place. And then throughout the pandemic, you know, next thing you know, we we shake hands and say, let's become partners and open a food hall in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> and <laughs> and the mall owners at the Tobman company um are are you know partners and they're absolutely amazing. I can't say enough great things. I mean, a lot of people have challenging relationships with landlords and I I they're all about a win-win for their tenants, which is something that is rare, I feel like, in the industry. And so it's great. But yeah, going back to John, we have a lot in common. There's a lot of things. We, we both enjoy food, of course, uh, people. Um, he has an amazing, you should put him on your show. He's, he's got an amazing background, you know, 30 plus years and, you know, working with five-star hotels and restaurants. Um, and I love learning from him, his knowledge and experience. And we also know we couldn't have done this without each other, right? So it's very symbiotic. Like, I, I wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for him and vice versa. And so we, we acknowledge that and appreciate it and let each other do their thing, you know? But um, yeah, he'll be here next week. So uh, I enjoy when he's in town and we can catch up and, and uh, have, have him at the restaurant and help him. The, the team loves him too. That's the thing. The culture, like I said, we're a big family. Um, and that's that's a big part of our success too. I think is having that Ohana. It's not just a place of work, but we've got a 80 employees now, um, and it's growing. We'll probably have another 30 more in the next couple months because <laughs> things have really ramped up. Mike, that's amazing. I, I want to ask you one more question before we wrap up. When you reflect back on your life so far, what's a valuable lesson you've learned? Oh man, there's so many. Um, and I think that is, you know, what's important. I always tell myself, you know, school's always in session. Um, if you think you know everything, you know, you might as well pack up and go home. But every day you're learning. You know, I read, read your book and learned new things that, you know, I never thought of or even things that you're reminded of. And I always want to be better every day. And I think that's, you know, a lot of leaders and successful and champions have that same spirit. You know, I mean, you look at world-class athletes, you know, whether it's, you know, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Tiger Woods, you name it, right? Um, they all have that where they, they're always trying to do better. You know, I can do better next time or in the next business or whatever it may be. So I think continual improvement. Um, I love the Japanese word Kaizen. Um, which is the same concept. And, you know, my wife's Japanese. So when we go to Japan, um, you see that in practice with everybody in every business. They are passionate about being the best at whatever it is they do. If they're manufacturing something, they want to be the best. If they're making food, even if it's not their own food, if it's French or Italian, they're making it the best it can be. And that's just ingrained in the culture. So um, I, I try to have that you know, as well. And then, of course, you know, just learning, you know, your direct reflection of the five or eight people you spend the most time with. And I think that is, you know, something we all hear, but it is so true. I look at successful people in their circle, and that is something that is paramount as well, that, you know, they're, they're surrounding themselves with other successful people or people that bring things to the table, maybe that they lack, you know. Um, so I think that's, that's really important as well. I love it, Mike. I, I thank you so much. Um, I love hearing your insights and, and thank you for helping our community. And I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Thank you so much for having me, Rusty. I'm absolutely honored that you have me on your amazing show here. And um, I look forward to your third book. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. And thank, thank you, you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit rustykomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Mike and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness. 
and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.